Given the tax filing season will be here in less than two months, what actions can you take now to reduce the amount of taxes you'll have to pay on this year's hard-earned income? In today's video, my colleague Jessica Nelson and I will go over one smart tax saving strategy, harvesting tax losses in your portfolio. Also be sure to watch till the end of this video where we'll be going over how to plan for investment capital gains distributions. Not the best topic for a cocktail party, but very helpful to know when trying to reduce your taxes. Hi everybody, and welcome to Wealth Matters for Physicians by Altfest Personal Wealth Management, the channel that provides key investing and personal financial planning insights to help physicians achieve their key life goals. Before I bring in Jessica, a few words about Altfest. For nearly 40 years, Altfest Personal Wealth Management has been helping physicians holistically optimize all areas of their personal financial lives in a fully objective, no commissions manner, while as a legal fiduciary, always putting our physicians' best interests first. As physicians, you'll probably also want to know that Altfest is the preferred wealth manager for members of the Medical Society of the State of New York and the preferred wealth management education provider for both the New York chapter of the American College of Surgeons and the New York State Society of Orthopedic Surgeons, just to name a few of our medical association partners. As I mentioned, my guest today is Jessica Nelson. Jessica is a certified public accountant, a certified financial planner, and a financial advisor at Altfest Personal Wealth Management, where she helps her clients optimize all areas of their personal financial planning and investment lives. So Jessica, thank you very much for being on Wealth Matters for Physicians again today. Of course, thank you for having me. Great, well let's get right to it. So to start us off, regarding tax loss harvesting as a tax saving strategy, can you tell us a little bit about what it is? What are the benefits? Yeah, absolutely. So tax loss harvesting is the act of selling your investments at a loss. You could then use those losses to offset any other capital gains. If need be, you can even use up to $3,000 of your capital loss to offset ordinary income. And also, you can even carry your capital losses from this year to use in future tax years. Great. So even if, for instance, the markets are temporarily down, mm -hmm. you could kind of make lemonade out of a lemon and try to preserve or capture some of these tax loss harvestings in order to reduce your taxes either this year or in future years. Absolutely, and that's the whole idea of um, harvesting losses, right? It's understanding that these losses may not be here forever, but while they're here, how can you use them to help um, just increase the after-tax return on your investments? Great, so Jessica, tax loss harvesting sounds really good, mm -hmm. but are, are there any pitfalls related to tax loss harvesting that our physician audience should be aware of? Yeah, absolutely. And one of the biggest pitfalls to keep in mind is wash sale rules, right? So what wash sale rules are, it's the idea that if you sell an investment um, at a loss, but maybe 30 days before or 30 days prior, you purchase that same investment or a substantially identical investment, part or possibly all of your losses could be disallowed. Um, so when you're working on doing tax loss harvesting, you really want to keep that in mind and make sure that you have suitable alternatives for that investment that you're selling. And you want to have suitable alternatives because that way you can stay in the market. Is that why? Yep, exactly. So that kind of gives us to the second pitfall that I wanted to mention. And it's just making sure that you always maintain the health of your portfolio, right? So you never want to sell a position um, in an attempt to do tax loss harvesting. And then next thing you know, you're not properly diversified, right? Or you're not positioned the way you would like to be positioned in the market. So by finding a suitable alternative, you make sure that you're not subjugated to wash sale rules, but you also make sure that you are still properly diversified. Great. So Jessica, lastly, what about these things called capital gains distributions? Our mm -hmm. physicians, I know I've heard about them, but yeah. they're kind of a little bit fuzzy. So can you please refresh us on what they are and how one can potentially plan for them from a tax perspective? Yeah, of course. So capital gains distributions are the distributions that individual investors get from, let's say, holding their mutual fund, right? So when you have a mutual fund, 
and you're looking in your account, you just see this one holding, this one mutual fund. But in reality, that fund holds a bunch of underlying positions. And the fund manager is buying and selling um, those underlying positions. And they're probably creating some capital gains there, right? right? Um, so they are required to distribute those capital gains to the investors. What you really want to be mindful of is making sure that you have tax-efficient mutual funds, because if not, you could end up paying a lot in short-term capital gains tax. Right, that's a great point. And also, I think you had mentioned something about you know, if you're thinking of getting into a mutual fund and it's towards the end of the year, you might want to be cognizant of the distribution date of those capital gains distributions. Am I missing anything? Yeah. So I think in addition to that, you really want to think about the nature of the capital gain distributions, right? Because no, no matter how long you held that fund, um, if the capital gains generated from the activity of the fund managers were short term, you're still going to end up paying those short term capital gains tax. Still going to get the short term. Yep. Mm -hmm. Even if you held that position for over a year. So what you want to be mindful of is what these estimated distributions may be, right? And that's something that we do for our clients. We look at the funds that they hold, we gather the estimated distributions, and then we weigh what our options are. Does it make sense to hold this fund and have our clients have to recognize those capital gain distributions? Or instead, does it make sense to sell out of that fund and instead recognize the unrealized gains or losses? Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Jessica, for being on today's video. I think you've given the physicians today a lot of good food for thought. Of course. If you'd like to discuss inf the information explained in today's video, receive a complimentary analysis of your investment portfolio or retirement readiness, or discuss any other personal financial planning area with an Altfest professional at no obligation, please contact my colleague, Jesse Freeling at 212-796-8732 or by emailing Jesse at his email address, which is also in the description of today's video below. If you like today's video, please click the subscribe button below and hit the bell icon to receive notifications each time we release a new one. If you think that a fellow physician would find this video interesting or useful, please share it with him or her to help them also get their finances optimized. Lastly, as always, if you have any topics you'd like us to cover, like or dislike certain things that we're doing, or have any other feedback, we'd love to hear from you. So please share your comments in the comments section below. Well, that's all for now, physicians. Thank you very much for watching today's video, and I look forward to being with you again in our next one. Until then, be well, and remember to keep on optimizing your finances, or let us help you if you'd like.